Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. I spoke to you early about the energy of channeling. That the human being is one who likes to keep things simple. Especially when it comes to those things which are spiritual. And in that there really is not an understanding of that which we will call the group of spirit. In that which is our reality, we are one. And this brings us into an area of study that we have given before that is probably the most difficult of any for you to absorb, understand, because it goes against that which is intuitive for humanity. You you're such a, a singular attitude for everything. The very life system is simple. For you there is birth, there is death, there is one soul, there is one body, there is one face, there is one name. And if you would believe that you would then return, and many do, the system of reincarnation, you would again have a singularity, one body, one soul, one name, one face. And therefore with that attitude, that which you see in the mirror, it gets put upon God. Every single angel is different, everyone has a name, a different face, you even want to count them. You will therefore assign to God what you have and not what God has. And when we speak to you about these things in the way we perceive them, we understand that it's difficult. Dear human being, it is difficult for you to perceive something you have never seen. For you to agree and cognize and believe something it would have an elegant system that you've never experienced. And so you are in some ways biased or stuck with that which you know. And that which you do not know therefore is not something you're willing to project or believe. And so therefore God is one entity. Therefore God is separate from humanity and on and on. But what we give you today is elegant, and it is complex, and it is advanced. And I love it. And the reason is because this information would not have been able to be transmitted to you in an older energy. Oh, we could. But there wouldn't be the understanding, the ahas, the elegance and benevolence of the system would not be seen as it will today. Now, just for those who are listening or for those who might be reading later, I sit in front of Canadians. And that is going to play into this message in a moment as you will see. There is a premise of belief that things are a certain way, especially spiritually, and stay that way forever. Therefore, if there is an axiom of God or a rule of God's energy, it is the same rule forever and it becomes sacred this is who God is this is how spirit works therefore get used to it count on it it is that way 
I bring to you a difference now. And that particular difference is based completely, wholly, and totally on new energy. I'll say this again, and I have said it before, and you should hear this, so that there is no controversy on what comes next. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But the relationship to the human being is constantly changing. Therefore, your perception of God will change. Not only that, the system of the God in you will change. All of this relates to the human, not the spirit. So I want you to understand this before we begin. What we're talking about is an elegance of evolution because of new energy and your soul. Dear ones, you are going to have to get off of that railroad that goes in one direction on those tracks that say everything operates one way <laughs> for it's about to shift we have given you a lot of information about what the human soul is this is not going to be repeated in this channel this is complex we've given you information which we are going to recount and review only in the category it needs to be reviewed to bring you something perhaps you didn't expect we'll start simple there is a system change in the new energy with the human soul and the concept of reincarnation this and the subject to follow it is going to relate especially to Canadians for they fall into a category that we are going to talk about when we sit in front of cultures we know where we are we know who is here because we are all one when we say we know who is here you are the family we know who is here <laughs> the oneness that you are with spirit is a oneness with me therefore I see what I will call the soul group that is before me and you all have something in common which is almost dichotomous with one of the soul groups I sat with on another continent in the country called Turkey and if you have heard that particular channeling we talked about who was there we talked about the reincarnate system that they had for the reasons that they had it and now we're going to do the same with you however it's going to involve a premise which we are starting to reveal about reincarnation in an older and simpler consciousness there was a certain kind of system of reincarnation that is now starting to change that particular system we spoke of in Turkey a critical system that had families reincarnating again and again and again in the same place this was critical for wisdom building so that eventually that particular place would not be diverse it would be filled with old souls that had grand and great wisdom so when the time came they could make a change in their land in the consciousness of their land and the change has come and the time is here this particular system is the system of the earth and for thousands of years the reincarnate system never changed this is why it was such a propensity to surround yourself in city-states in 
groups of consciousness because the family feeling you had was not just based upon what you had now but also that which is your Akashic record and your Akashic history you could feel it you knew it you would tend then to isolate yourselves but this was the system of a lower consciousness it had to be that way to facilitate who you were and what you were thinking now if you stir karma into that you will see another profound system that was meant to push and pull the humans around in ways that would allow diversity within their karmic group unfinished business you'd feel it my partner remembers the controversy in 1993 when my message was given to earth in the first book my partner thought the first book would be it now he has a book and he's done he did not understand why I was here what was going to happen or the beauty of what happened he did not see his life changing as it changed but he was aware of the controversy being that which was new because he was new because I gave the information you're done with karma the first time I changed the system and there were those who would say no this has been around for thousands of years it's the way God works with humans and it never will change well dear ones it did because you did get used to that for you'll hear this throughout this message you don't need karma we told you the system of reincarnation that included the karmic overlay was starting to shift that should have told you that the whole idea of the kind of reincarnation you were used to would shift and it has you had to wait until you crossed the marker of 2012 before we could start telling you what is starting to occur and we are you sit here and many of you have dropped your karma and you've done it through verbalizing that you have dropped it <laughs> the body listened to you that which is the innate agreed and you did not have it push and pull you around some of you saw this very blatantly because the ones who came in with you you would call family members still had it intact and today even you can see it in how they react with one another how they argue with one another the drama in the family that you walked away from I know who is sitting here you dropped yours and they kept theirs you literally dismissed thousands of years of overlapping unfinished business because it was old and it moved on reincarnation started to change not just recently but way before you passed the marker it had to to help facilitate that which you are here for today and suddenly as we have talked about you have an entire group which moved away from the group family and sometimes it was in the physical that is to say you were reborn somewhere else and sometimes you stayed in the physical family but your Akashic record pulled you so strongly to another place and now you know why because you belong to another family it became diverse you started to see the dismissal of the simplicity of the reincarnate system that was family into a diverse system that put many together from different parts of the earth previously in your Akash 
This is profound here in Canada. It is profound. And it tells you that there is an elegance in the old souls that are here in the room and also who are Canadian. Years ago we told you that part of this was that you were to be stewards of the land that was new. And that hundreds of years ago when you discovered how pristine it was that there are portals here that you needed to understand and recognize and keep pristine and your consciousness was needed to break away from the reincarnate family group of old energy and start anew. And that's why you're here. Almost all of you from somewhere else karmically the karma has been dismissed and when I say karmically I mean from the old karmic groups you developed one from here one from there so that there would be a diversity within your consciousness of tolerance <laughs> now we start the understanding what happens when the system changes what happens when you have diversity in reincarnation and you have many family groups and karmic groups touched karmically they are pulled to another place where you're absolutely given the ability to drop that affiliation and start anew with a new family group of diverse souls from all over the world what's the consciousness going to be like there is a similarity in the country below you and it also explains that diversity in them which does not follow an old world system but here it's even more pristine and you feel it there is a tolerance level which is grander and greater here even than some of the other countries we've spoken of and the reason is you're new <laughs> you realize the land you walk on is fresh it doesn't affect you the only things that affect you Canadian with your reincarnate group is the fact that you are now walking on pristine portals all over the place and these we need you to steward and all that means is to honor the land that is here and be respectful of the pristineness and the newness of it because it's never had war it doesn't have centuries of old energy and death and destruction it doesn't have the drama it doesn't have one temple rebuilt over another for hundreds of years if not thousands there has been history here but it hasn't been like it was in Europe and in Western Canada specifically it is some of the most pristine lands on the planet guarded by the old souls that are here on purpose with a system of reincarnation that has become elegant for you the second one it's actually funny all the indigenous of the planet honor their ancestors <laughs> we told you some time ago you should perhaps consider looking at that system and rekindling some of that which worked so well for the indigenous to look at the history and then come to honor that which was before you your ancestors how do you feel about that Canadian you don't have any <laughs> nothing happened here <laughs> you don't have the thousands of years all the indigenous do but you don't but you don't the majority of Canada is so new that you just don't 
And so if I said to you, it's time to honor your ancestors, who would they be? Where would you go? Can you even track them back that far at this stage in your life? Now I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Some of you have second guessed this. You need to honor your ancestors. And I want you to honor your Akashic ancestors. Would you agree with me that you've had many lifetimes? And if you do, and if you sit there and say, yes, Crying, I know I have. Each one of you have had a mother. Each one of you have had a father. Each one of you has had a family somewhere over and over on this planet that nursed you to health, to gave you the spark of life, taught you to, to walk, cherished you, and loved you. Lifetime after lifetime after lifetime and you don't know who they are. I would like to tell you they're everywhere. Some of them are with you, most of them are not. Physically, it doesn't matter. I want you to start honoring your ancestors, your Akashic ones. The ones who really are family and they still are. In your Akash are the energies of love that you experienced so many times over and over since the beginning your ancestry is huge it is amazing and I'm asking you to look at it differently old soul you're starting to graduate into new kinds of thought the ancestors are the Akashic ones the ones that you cannot track back in genealogy of chemistry they're the ones that belong to your family and former families of this planet. Can you do that? I challenge you to start meditations by honoring the Akashic ancestors that would bring you the wisdom that you would have today to sit where you sit and claim that you are on pristine land that's beautiful. It's not an accident that my partner feels the affinity of the land here and slightly west where things have happened that he doesn't know about and sometime that might be revealed we talked to those in Turkey and we said there was history before history before history and that you don't have any idea and it's being uncovered there is some of that here not much but not war and not drama and not the kinds of battles that were so prevalent in the seat of civilization around greater Persia oh you're different and that means the assignment is different what you're supposed to do is hold the energy of a pristine and new and fresh land for there isn't that much of it on the planet not really that you could live upon and that affects the crystalline grid of the earth which affects the consciousness of the entire planet what you do here dear ones affects others in other places next one is harder because now we're getting into a subject called soul sharing and that is not in your consciousness again you want to simplify everything when we told you before there are systems where the souls actually intermingle and share one body for a lifetime especially with that system you call walk-ins you're horrified well who's in charge you might say <laughs> or which soul is the is the soul that makes the decisions you might say and we laugh in a very in a very honest way with you only because you have not yet experienced the the beauty of the oneness there's no such thing as two souls sharing the body it's simply more oneness that is a concept you don't have you know what is interesting to us 
is that some of humanity's best inventions are really quite elegant and complex. You have no problem making things complex for humans, but you do not want to apply that to spirit. You've got to dumb it down a little bit for God. <laughs> Nothing too complex is allowed. And that is how you think. It's not really complex. It's just beyond the consciousness that you've learned. You are part of the whole. A walk-in is described as a human soul that comes into another lifetime between the ages often of six and ten and it's called a walk-in because it is a fast-track method of reincarnation that would allow you to come back quickly and skip the growing up process no learning to walk no learning to read no learning to eat we need you faster and so that which is what you would call the death will have a situation where the reincarnate soul would come back in on top if you wish to of another life but there's no such thing as on top there's no such thing as sharing you simply are one of one with the other it's the best we can do you don't even have the language for it when you start understanding that which is what we will call a multi-dimensional world the reality which is multi-dimensional is far far closer to that which is the physics of consciousness and spirit than anything you have currently which you call 3D we have told you before that the missing laws of physics because there will be six instead of four actually some of you say there are six now but there are not <laughs> there will be the strong and the weak multi-dimensional force this will also explain something called dark energy and a lot of other attributes that you actually are seeing today with some of your instruments but you are putting them forcing them into Newtonian science <laughs> all those great 3D teachers Kepler, Newton, would be proud <laughs> of having those things which were beyond anything they thought forced into their formulas. <laughs> and that's exactly what you've done. This will then break open and eventually you'll see it. And when you do, you will also then see what I'm talking about. There is a oneness in the galaxy, in the universe, that is not explainable in any language you have today you're going to find it by the way all through physics and biology it even helps to explain the triad which we gave you before I want to talk about walk-ins you're going to get more of them the system of reincarnation is changing and you are being asked to fast track that which is wisdom on the planet the old souls many of you will come back very quickly and also be then an oversoul an overlay any word you want as a walk-in with another human being through agreement of their soul there's going to be more and more and more the attribute of an old soul with a walk-in is different there'll be a marked change in the personality in the ability perhaps even in that which is their what you would call propensities for the things they like the, the talents they have the the things that they love to watch and do watch for a shift this often happens with a child who perhaps makes a trip it's a trip perhaps then in health to the hospital maybe in a coma it might even be something that happens overnight in their sleep but there'll be confusion for a while and then they'll awaken and it'll all be different now I don't want you to mistake this there are those dear ones who will look at this and say it's a possession <laughs> 
You know what I'm speaking of. And it isn't. It is so loving. It is a benevolent meld of two souls in order to accomplish a higher consciousness on this planet. Call to walk in. Very basically, look for more of them. I tell you this, because Canadian, you're going to see more of them than most. <laughs> Diversity, tolerance, unity, all of those things belong to you. There are certain systems that cannot change because the land demands the same soul group. And then there are other lands that demand a diversified soul group that don't have the same attributes or biases even. Can a soul have a bias? It can if it brings in karma. And that's up to you to dismiss it. So those are three big attributes. I can give you two more. I can give you a lot more. <laughs> The template is changing. Third channel that involved the word template. The template we talk about is the Pleiadian template from the time capsules being brought, brought to you now through your grid. It happens at birth. This is the template, we will call it, of human nature. With a higher consciousness allows a greater template to be broadcast you might think because you have a time capsule in your country that it might be affecting you differently it doesn't work that way the time capsules are all over the earth in a pattern that is known by the Pleiadians to work in a special way calling an engine of multidimensional physics and this is what they needed in order to put into the magnetic and crystalline grid the templates that would grow according to human consciousness. In other words, human nature is allowed to change as you then get in a higher consciousness of allowance. One drives the other. It's a push-pull system. This is not something that you are understanding. You don't have to. Just know that you have caused something that is amazing, special, benevolent, and beautiful. Human nature is changing. The templates for who you are in your DNA, and by who you are, I mean what percent of your DNA is going to be that which looks for God. As your innate pulls closer to your consciousness that is survival of the brain, you become wiser. That is in the new template. All part of reincarnation for the new souls will have the new templates. And I say to you what my partner did, any of you with grandchildren have seen it. <laughs> You've seen it. And it's new. And it's different. And in your sleep, you can congratulate yourselves. Or you can do it out loud if you have the courage for making these kinds of changes where the very children that you are alive to see are embracing it. You don't have to wait lifetimes and lifetimes to see what you've done. You're already looking at it. I'll give you one last one. It's complex. Humans reincarnate. You leave the planet and you come back. One to one. But there's a lot of new humans coming in. The more of you who come in and live longer lifetimes, the more there are to reincarnate as old souls. But there's always new humans coming in. What we have not really told you or discussed is where they're coming from. <laughs> Dear ones, almost exclusively, you reincarnate from a time when you've done this before on other planets. 
There are a lot of graduate planets, there are some that are not. Graduate meaning those like the Pleiadians who have a piece of God in their soul group and they have ascended to the degree where they are then responsible for seeding you. We've talked about those from Orion and Syria, Syrians, the, the Arcturians, we talked about the lineage of planetary seeding. We've talked about the millions of years this took. We've talked about the fact that you're new. But now you cross the bridge. And you are going to start seeing a new kind of human come in. Because the pool of where you come from is starting to change. It's part of the template. The pool of where you come from. You have exponential growth on the planet. It won't always be that way. It's geometric. It's always that way because it's simple math. Until consciousness gets a hold of the fact that you can control it, and you will, it continues. And now you have seven billion. They had to come from somewhere. And now they're going to cart. <laughs> You're going to see it. They're going to start coming from somewhere else. <laughs> You'll know it a little by the way they look, but mostly by the way they act. The pool is changing, and that's all I can tell you, because you're not aware of the other places. It would mean nothing to you. Even if we described consciousness, it would be nothing to you. You haven't seen it yet. You don't know about it. But you will, you'll feel it. The children are going to change yet again. And they're going to get wiser and brighter. There's going to be some astonishing kids coming your way in your lifetime. And you'll remember this channel. The pool is starting to change from where the souls are being collected from to come to an earth that has now awakened with light. We leave you with these words. Don't despair that it's taken as long as it is. Don't look around and decide you think you know what's happening. Because those in charge of giving you that news of what is happening are invested in a system not of what is happening but what they want you to think is happening. I want you to be wiser than that. I want you to look at the kids. <laughs> this is the message of crying. It is a message that is elevated in detail. But this is the group that I wanted to give it to. Go from this place with more light than you came in with. Mm -hmm. And so it is.